multiple sclerosis, or MS, is the most common immune-mediated inflammatory demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, or CNS. Although we have learned a great deal about MS since Jean-Martin Charcot's first lectures in 1868, the etiology and complete immunopathogenesis remains elusive. Ultimately, a complex interplay of genetic predisposition and environmental factors results in immune system dysregulation. This dysregulation leads to the generation of autoreactive immune cells that invade and attack the CNS, causing demyelination and axile loss, resulting in a host of often disabling neurological symptoms. Recent evidence has implicated an altered gut microbiome as a potential modifiable environmental risk factor in this disease. In this video, we will explore the gut microbiome and its contribution to inflammation in MS. Once referred to as the forgotten organ, the human gut microbiome has become a hot research topic as its crucial role in health is being rapidly realized. The gut microbiome refers to all of the microorganisms and their genes in the gut, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Of the 10 to 100 trillion microorganisms, that make up our overall microbiota, approximately 70 to 80% reside in the gut. The gastrointestinal tract also houses the gut-associated lymphoid tissue, GALT, the largest organ in the immune system. The GALT serves as a reservoir for almost 80% of immune cells in the human body. This close physical approximation provides an ideal environment for the gut microbiome to influence the maturation and development of the immune system. In a healthy human gut microbiome, there is an optimal proportion of both pro-inflammatory gut bacteria, represented by brown-segmented filamentous bacteria, and anti-inflammatory gut bacteria, represented by green bacteroides fragiles, that provide signals to the developing immune system controlled by the human genome. This interaction results in a balance of Treg, anti-inflammatory, and Th17, pro-inflammatory, immune cells. In this case of a balanced gut microbiome, autoimmune disease does not develop. Even if the human genome contains genetic mutations that increase autoimmune risk, represented by red stars. However, if this balance of organisms is altered, termed dysbiosis, human disease can occur. For example, an increase in pro-inflammatory microbes may promote an increase in pro-inflammatory Th17 immune cells, tipping the scales towards autoimmune diseases like MS. Likewise, a decrease in anti-inflammatory bacteria may result in underdevelopment of anti-inflammatory Treg immune cells and ultimately lead to disease. The imbalance between Th17 cells and Treg cells ultimately leads to autoimmunity. While we've hypothesized a mechanism by which altered gut microbiota can affect autoimmunity, what is the evidence that this dysbiosis is actually occurring in people with MS? Recent animal and human studies have shown that this dysbiosis is in fact present in MS, shifting the balance of immune cells towards an inflammatory phenotype. One of the first studies in humans to show this dysbiosis demonstrated that people with MS have an overabundance of pro-inflammatory species of Acinetobacter and Acromantia, known to inhibit anti-inflammatory Treg cells and promote inflammatory Th1 lymphocytes. People with MS also showed a decrease in Parabacteroides, a protective gut bacterium shown to increase anti-inflammatory Treg cells. Subsequent human studies have implicated numerous other key players, such as decreased Prevotella strains in patients with MS, with lower abundance associated with an expansion of Th17 pro-inflammatory cells in the intestine. Moreover, these differences appear to correlate with disease activity. Active relapsing remitting MS, RRMS, patients show lower abundance of Prevotella, while inactive RRMS patients show higher abundance of Prevotella, implicating this species' protective role. 
An altered gut microbiome is not the only change we see in people with MS. There are also alterations in the intestinal barrier, the physical and functional zone of interaction between the gut microbiome and the rest of the human body. For example, tight junctions, the barriers that regulate what molecules can squeeze between cells, become more permissive in people with MS, resulting in increased intestinal permeability. This leaky gut is seen in up to 70% of people with MS and has been hypothesized to allow the translocation or passage of microbes and their noxious products or metabolites into the bloodstream. Once in the bloodstream, these microbes and their products can alter the peripheral immune response and migrate to the CNS to contribute to neuroinflammation. Much like the leaky gut, one of the hallmarks of people with MS is a leaky blood-brain barrier, which may allow these microbe-derived metabolites and activated pro-inflammatory immune cells to enter the CNS and promote demyelination and axonal loss. This pathway between the gut, the immune system, and the brain has been termed the gut-brain axis. It is bidirectional, meaning that not only can the gut microbiome influence inflammation in the brain, but also the injured brain can trigger signals back to the gut via the enteric nervous system to trigger more intestinal inflammation and permeability, resulting in an ongoing cycle of worsening CNS inflammation. So how do we break this cycle of gut dysbiosis, inflammatory immune cell activation, and CNS demyelination? Altering the gut microbiome through diet, antibiotics, probiotics, or fecal microbiota transplantation are all areas of active research. In the mouse model of MS, termed experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, or EAE, scientists have shown we can influence this dysbiosis through alterations in diet and supplementation and reduce CNS inflammatory activity. For example, by administering mice with Bacteroides fragilis, an anti-inflammatory gut bacterium we previously mentioned, or one of its carbohydrate products called polysaccharide A, or PSA. We can protect mice against CNS demyelinating disease both prophylactically to prevent EAE and therapeutically to reduce EAE severity by inducing production of anti-inflammatory Treg cells. In another study, Mice were prophylactically given Privotella histolica, another anti-inflammatory gut bacterium typically in lower abundance in patients with MS, before being induced for EAD. Privotella administration restored a healthy gut microbiome and reduced gut permeability, blood-brain barrier dysfunction, and CNS inflammation by decreasing Th1 and Th17 inflammatory cells and increasing Treg cells. Similar studies are underway in humans. One of the first attempts to restore the balance of the gut microbiome and reduce CNS inflammatory activity in MS patients was utilizing the probiotic called propionate. Previous studies have shown that propionate, a fatty acid product of some gut bacteria, is also disproportionately low in people with MS. By orally supplementing individuals with propionate, Blood levels of pro-inflammatory Th17 cells dropped and anti-inflammatory Treg cells increased in just 14 days. With long-term supplementation after 90 days, these changes translated into reduced MS disease activity as measured by a decrease in relapse rates and disability scores. And while we have not yet identified a definitive disease-modifying MS diet, formulated a probiotic that may help all stages and subtypes of MS, or elucidated the efficacy and feasibility of fecal microbiota transplants. These early studies on restoring gut homeostasis foretell great promise in new therapeutic approaches to this disease. We hope you'll join us for our full CME series on multiple sclerosis to learn more. We explore these questions and more in our MS educational series. Go to ms.stanford.edu to learn more.